Hi everybody, how's it going? So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what skills I think you need to be a web developer in 2018. Now, I began my journey to be a web developer in 2016, and to be completely honest with you, I was completely lost when I first started. So I made the decision to go and study a bootcamp. I felt for me it was the best way to do it, to be in a classroom with a curriculum and a teacher, and somebody to guide me through. So obviously that was great for me. Uh, obviously that also isn't possible for everybody. Sometimes, you know, you can't afford it or you don't have a bootcamp near you or you don't have a good bootcamp near you. So sometimes you just need to go out alone and learn yourself. But fear not, because once I left my bootcamp and I kind of went into the industry, I felt completely lost again. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know about terms, the stuff I hadn't learned about that in the real world I should know, I didn't know how to do it, and I don't still know how to do a lot of stuff. So I don't know if you've already seen it, but there's an amazing GitHub repo out there with the developer roadmap on it. So it's hosted by a guy called Kamram Ahmed. So thanks to him, thanks for providing it. I'm gonna take that map and I'm gonna kind of walk through it and give my take on what you should be learning at each step. Okay, so this is the front end roadmap. Uh, if you start here, uh, it starts obviously with learning the basics. So number one is HTML. So this, I would say, is going in and learning how to set up a basic HTML file, um, how to then structure HTML files with the HTML tags. Suggested here that you make at least now five HTML pages and focus on the structure of the page. So that's obviously using the head and the body in the right place. Uh, it's using the different types of uh, signifier tags in the HTML body. So whether it's nav, whether it's article, whether it's picture, so using all the proper tags for when you get onto uh, accessibility. And then once you're going on from HTML, you wanna go and go onto CSS, uh, just look at the basics, look at how the grid system works and how Flexbox works, uh, how media queries and responsive websites work using native CSS, and then also how to then style the HTML pages that you may have made in this step here. And then you're gonna to wanna to go through and learn the basics of JavaScript. So obviously that's basic syntax of a JavaScript file, uh, how to link a JavaScript file to an HTML file. So where it's gonna run and how it's gonna run. Learning how to manipulate the DOM or the, do the document object model, there we go. Uh, that's basically how JavaScript breaks up the page into separate elements that it will need to work on. Understanding obviously concepts that are associated with JavaScript, you can Google any of these, and start reading up on them, watch some YouTube videos about them. Learning Ajax in vanilla JavaScript, so that's basically how to do uh, requests from a server. And then looking at ES6 and all the new features of modular JavaScript, which I personally think is super important to do. It's not something I learned at my bootcamp in 2016, and I'm kind of having to learn it now on my own as I go at my new job. I've got here that jQuery is optional. I personally think that jQuery is still a very valuable tool. Um, it's a great library to know. So I think you should still at least look at the basics, look at how to integrate jQuery into a JavaScript file. And then the recommendation here is makes a responsive website and add some interactivity with JavaScript. I think that's actually a really good idea. So what you could aim for here is take the five pages uh, that you built here styled them here, made them a bit interactive here, and there you go, you've now made a responsive website with some JavaScript, uh, well done. The next suggestion here is to look for some projects on GitHub and open some uh, repos. Some of the ideas are listed below, enhance the UI, make any demo pages responsive or improve the design. So this is looking a bit at other people's projects on GitHub and it's taking them and it's this is looking at more open source work, taking somebody else's work, working it yourself, changing it, refactoring it, playing around with other people's code. This way you get a bit more of an experience about what it's like to work in the real world. And then give yourself a pat on the back, you're getting there. <laughs> so as you move down, um, you're gonna to need to look at package managers. It's something you're gonna come across anyway in the web development industry in 2018. So whether it be NPM or Yarn, I personally use NPM. Um, I've not really used Yarn, I don't really know what it is. So my package manager that I use is NPM. And then install some external dependency in your application. Go ahead and install an external library in your web pages that you made above, i.e. the Toast plugin, when the user clicks a button, it shows a Toast message. That's really cool. That's a really good idea. So yeah, if you wanna go ahead and do that, just Google it, 
watch some YouTube videos, you'll see how to do it really easily. Now the next step is CSS preprocessors. I cannot say anything on this because I don't know anything about CSS preprocessors. Uh, it's not SAS or post CSS or less or stylus. It's something I've never used. It's something I've never worked with. It's something I've never learned. To be honest, it's still something that terrifies me. I really don't understand how it works. So if you have any recommendations for me, then please uh, let me know in the comments down below. It says, learn SAS now. I'd recommend you learn SAS now. Post CSS is nice to have and a sort of babel for CSS. You can use it on top of SAS also. However, I reckon you learn SAS and revisit post CSS later. So I guess I'm gonna be adding that to my to-do list. <laughs> he now gets on and says, you should learn CSS framework here after having done all of that. And he recommends Bootstrap. Um, I think that's a good idea. It's a good idea anyway to learn Bootstrap regardless of how relevant you might think it is in 2018. I still personally think it's a really, 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 really good library and framework to use for styling. Uh, most of the websites I build are based around Bootstrap. I personally think though it should be up here um, around this area, kind of after you've learned the basics because it really helps your CSS skills not to rely on Bootstrap, but it really makes building websites and completing projects at that early stage in your learning process a lot, 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 lot easier. And I think it's better up here around this kind of area to learn Bootstrap, but it's good to see that it's still here included in the roadmap. Then you want to look at CSS architecture and how you structure your CSS better. Personally, I have no idea what this even means. I have no idea what BEM is, but I guess it's another thing I need to start looking into. Uh, if you haven't already guessed, my CSS uh, knowledge and skills is a little uh, lacking, but I think you can see from up here, if you check my web design videos that I've made, my design skills are lacking, so it's another area that I really have to focus on. Tools to help you in the building and building of development. So NPM scripts, ESLint, and Webpack. I personally never learn any of these. Um, I do use Webpack though uh, when I do come to program because I work mainly in Angular. So just part of the Angular CLI, when you go and do builds and you push to production, uh, it does use Webpack to compile your projects for you. So that's kind of the exposure that I have to Webpack, but I think it's good that it's recommended because it's 2018, technology is moving along in such a way that everybody needs to know at least what these tools are nowadays. So create something, maybe a library, congrats. You can call yourself 75% modern JavaScript developer now. Now go ahead and create something with all that you've learned. Maybe create some sort of library in which you have to use SAS and JavaScript, then use Webpack to convert SAS to CSS, and use Babel to transpile ES6 code. Once you're done with that, release it on GitHub and NPM. Um, that's a bit of a crazy step. <laughs> uh, I don't know personally if I would recommend you do that, or if you have enough skills to do anything like that at this point of your studying. If you do, go ahead and do it, good luck. Um, but, you know, it's always something to consider in the future. I'm always looking at programming from an eye of, okay, I need an NPM package, it doesn't exist, or something does exist, but it doesn't quite do the job I want to do. So, I, you know, it's something that every developer should have in the back of their mind, as, as well as making web apps and web pages. Also looking at how you can make tools for other developers to make their lives easier. Uh, and then we move down to pick a framework. So here he's re uh, recommending React, Angular, or Vue. Personally, on a personal level, I am going to recommend Angular, uh, just because that is the framework that I was taught at my bootcamp, and it is the framework that I now use at my job. I don't have any exposure to React or Vue. I have watched some videos about React and Vue. They both seem very cute and quite easy compared to Angular to pick up. So, you know, personally, it took me a long time to get Angular. I learned AngularJS at my bootcamp. I don't really think you need to learn it nowadays. It's a relatively old framework, so don't really put much time and effort into it. If you do want to learn the Angular frameworks, go for Angular too. Don't confuse yourself. But looking at React and Vue versus Angular, just from what I've seen from the outside, they do seem a lot easier to pick up. So maybe go ahead and look at those first. We now move down into the world of, so you've gone, you've learned your skills, you've learned a framework, you've learned design, you've learned responsiveness. You should now be building some cool stuff. Um, 
Going into testing, now this is something that if you're using Angular as a framework, if you install your project with the Angular CLI, you have a testing framework or a testing environment, sorry, built in automatically. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really do that much testing on my products, I really should. Um, in my previous role, it was something that we were trying to move into. And I actually did a lot of research in how to do testing in Angular 2. Um, I, so I was mainly exposed to the Karma and Protractor test runners and also a bit of Mocha. But I think it is something that web developers should get into the habit of doing because obviously it'll cut down on QA, it'll cut down on development time and everybody will be a lot happier. Then get into progressive web apps. So this is if you're gonna build an app that also you wanna work natively or use the native features of a telephone or a mobile browser. Uh, static type checkers, TypeScript and Flow. Now, this for me is a bit of a tricky one. When it comes to static type checkers, uh, TypeScript obviously is the recommended one here. I use it in Angular too, just by a byproduct of writing apps and websites and stuff like that in Angular too. I use TypeScript. It's not something I was ever taught how to do. It's something I've literally picked up along the way. I hated it at first, and you will too. <laughs> but the more you keep going, you're just taking it slow. I think it's a really, really, really good skill to have. Also from a job hunting point of view, you know, having that on your CV really helps you stand out because not a lot of at least junior developers know TypeScript. So if you want to go ahead and learn it, then really go ahead because it will serve you in the long run. And then you get onto server-side rendering. Um, again, big question mark for me. Angular Universal. This is literally the first time I'm ever hearing about this. And uh, the recommended one here, Next.js for React. I don't really work with React, so I don't really know what that is. Uh, and then finally, all the things that we mentioned above, that weren't mentioned above, sorry. So Canvas, HTML5 APIs, SVG, source maps, functional programming, TC39, go figure. Canvas is awesome. Uh, that's something you should look at around HTML5. HTML5 APIs as well is another awesome thing you can use. It can really cut down on your development time. SVGs, using them for graphics and images is awesome. It saves so much time and headache when it comes to CSS styling. You just chuck an SVG in there. It works out the size and responsiveness for you and it makes your life beautiful. And then finally, we get on here to keep exploring. So... I think this is an awesome roadmap. I think this is an awesome, awesome, awesome guide for new developers to learn uh, where to go and what to do next and kind of just give a bit of structure to the learning process. So now that I've walked through the roadmap, I also think there's a couple of other things on there that haven't been included that should be. that are also really important for new developers. The number one thing is teamwork. So in my bootcamp, when we got projects to do, they were all individual projects. There weren't any teamwork projects to do. There was very little interaction um, on a programming level between you know me and the people that were sitting around me. And I'm not bad at teamwork. I, I love working in a team, but obviously when I first got to the industry, I had no exposure on working with other people on the same project, working on the same code, working with Git, pull requests, pushes, all that kind of stuff I had no exposure to from my bootcamp. So I think if you're coming into web development in 2018, you should, if you can, look into and try and experience working as a team. If that means getting a couple of friends that are also learning development together and working on a project, or looking for an open source project and contributing to that. I think the roadmap is also lacking on its looking at UI and UX. If you're coming into the world for a front-end developer role, um, even if you're not the one doing the designing, you still should have a good knowledge of UI UX. It's something I've spoken about previously in this video up here. Uh, so if you wanna go and check that one out, I really do suggest it. And finally, I think time estimation and planning is a really important thing that new developers, uh, well, me at least, didn't get any exposure to. When you come to do a project at work and your project manager asks you how long something should take, when you're new to it, you don't really know. So you usually, well, in my experience, tend to underestimate how long it's gonna to take to do something. And you're kind of stuck in a catch-22 of, I thought it would take this long, but I'm now going over time and it makes me look bad. So I wish that's something that I had known beforehand getting into the industry, how to better estimate uh, how long something is gonna take purely based on my skill level, not based on any you know outside circumstance, just how long I think it will take me to do something, but also being truthful about that to your managers.
Because on the flip side, if you overestimate something and then you deliver it early, you'll look amazing. So if you think I've missed anything out, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you went ahead and subscribed to my channel for more content like this. Until next time, thanks a lot for watching.